Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Thursday, we're getting towards the weekend. The Euros are about to spring back into action with the quarterfinals, starting with an incredibly tasty day of football tomorrow. Germany versus Spain. Cannot wait for that. I've got a sneaky feeling that's going to penalties, I have to say. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk a little bit about England a little bit later on in this show. Looks like Gareth Southgate might be tweaking the tactics a little bit, believe it or not. And uh, Bakaya Saka could potentially be playing as a wing back. We will discuss that a little bit later on in the show. Got some questions and comments from you guys. We'll talk about William Saliba, Chido, uh, Chido Obi Martin, um, and of course, Ricardo Calafuri as well, as that transfer story continues to set the headlines both in England and in Italy. First of all, if you're watching this in the Caribbean, just want to pass on my best wishes and I hope all is well. And uh, after the awful hurricane barrel was swept across the uh, country, of course, I've got my Caribbean roots. My mum is from St. Vincent and St. Vincent has been absolutely hammered by the hurricane. I've been reading on um, on the uh, the local news over there in St. Vincent of the awful, awful damage to Union Island and, and everywhere across St. Vincent and the Grandines and across the wider Caribbean as well. So if you are watching, and I know there's plenty of you from the Caribbean because you always mention it in the comments, uh, I hope you are safe and well and I hope you know, the hurricane has not done too much damage over in such a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And happy 4th of July to all the Americans watching as well. I hope you have a really good day celebrating over there. Right, let's start with Ricardo Calafuri. Shall we spoke about him in the last couple of videos? This transfer story really beginning to heat up now. Uh, as I said, both over here, but certainly in Italy as well. Reports are all over the place of Bids being made, bids being rejected, bids being accepted. Wherever you read, there's a different sort of story on it. I can only say my own information on it right now from what I've been, from people I've been speaking to over here is that nothing's been agreed and that talks are, you know, ongoing. The interest is there. Arsenal are very, you know, want to try and get this deal done if they can, but there is still work to do on it. So I haven't been told, I can't confirm to you that any bids being accepted or anything like that. I've seen all the reports, obviously, agreement on the player side, and I'm sure that's absolutely right, because when you get into the stage you're talking to Bologna and trying to thrash out a deal with them, deal with, with them, then basically the deal with the player is already agreed, because, you know, behind the scenes, that just always goes on. And uh, so that when the actual agreement between the club is reached, then the transfer can move on very, very quickly, and I'm sure that will be the case. But right now, as it stands, as far as I'm aware, there is no agreement between the clubs and so the talks are still ongoing but you know it's definitely one as I've said the last couple of days to keep a firm eye on and the way things are moving how quickly they seem to be moving it feels like it's a deal that will probably get done but until it is you just never know and especially when you got someone like Chelsea lurking in the background who are also interested in the Italian defender then you never know because we know what Chelsea can do when it comes to being so disruptive in this transfer market uh, so it's all about trying to get this deal done for him. It's an interesting one. I tell you what, if at the start of this transfer window, you said to me that the first sign in Arsenal were going to make was going to be a left-sided central defender who can play left-back, I would have, I would have laughed. And I was going to say I'd call you crazy, but I probably wouldn't because <laughs> I think Mikel Arteta's got a, got history for for loving that type of signing. But yeah, and on a transfer window, when we've all been so focused on what's going to happen on attack and how Arsenal are going to improve things in the final third, the fact that an Italian defender could well be the first significant piece of business when you ignore David Raya, because look, we all know that's been done for a long, long time, just waiting for the announcement, which will be pretty, pretty soon. Um, but in terms of, yeah, you know, other fresh incomings, it just does make me laugh that he is probably what well, could well be the first. But as I said, nothing is done yet, but talks on going and moving at a decent pace. And hopefully it's what Arsenal can get done. And isn't it very exciting signing? Certainly, I would say talking to people who know far more about him than I do, because my my knowledge of Calafuri is very, very limited as I've not seen too much of Bologna. And uh, obviously, I haven't seen, I didn't really watch too much of Italy over the Euros. But what I did see, he certainly caught the eye. And the fact that he was suspended for that game when they eventually did go out to, to Switzerland, maybe that was a key factor, them going out. But it looks like a swashbuckling type uh, defender. Very handsome as well, looking at that picture. He's going to add to the handsomeness stakes at Arsenal, um, which will please a lot of people, I'm sure. Um and uh, the fact that he can play, you know, in a couple of positions that play at that left-sided centre-back, can play and left-back, can really bomb forward. It kind of looks like it would, could well be Arsenal's left-sided Ben White, if you see what I mean. Definitely opens up some conversations about what happens now with Arsenal's defence. You know, what do you do with Urien Timber? What's the plan going to be for him if Calafuri comes in? Um, 
you know, which player goes, because I'm still sure that a player will go when it comes to Arsenal's defence if Calafuri comes in. So there's lots of interesting conversations to be had about this potential deal going through. And lots of you have been getting in touch, having those very conversations. Matt here has got in touch and says, I can't see Calafuri coming to Arsenal. He'll either go to Chelsea or a big Italian club. Italian clubs have a knack for using fake interest from the Premier League to put pressure and urgency on the big Italian clubs to pay up for the player in question. Italian players don't usually succeed in England for whatever reasons. I agree with you to a point, Matt. And I have to admit, when I first saw the links with Calafuri, this was my first thought on it, was what you were saying. But... You know, I've had it confirmed. There is definitely Arsenal are trying to sign Ricardo Calafuri. It's not fake. Um, it's not, you know, and I spoke about it before you had the whole, I always use the example of Vlajevic, don't I, when it comes to this sort of transfer deal, when it emerges from Italy and always being a bit sceptical about how strong the reports are. But, you know, in, in this case, unlike with Vlajevic, which I never had confirmed anything was really going on, despite all the stories that were coming out of Italy at the time. This time, I, you know, I, I do believe that there is, you know, genuine interest in Arsenal trying to get this deal done on it. Uh, FTSN365 says, Scamacca and Udogi are the most recent examples of Italians going to the Premier League. Of course, there are, you know, there is definitely a route that isn't often trodden that that much when it comes to Italians moving to England but there is there is certainly history on it and as you said some recent examples Skamaka didn't really work out when he went to West Ham Udogi has had a very good start to life at Tottenham you've got Vicario as well of course in playing for Tottenham now in goals so there's been a couple of moves to North London in the last year or so um so we do see it even if it's not the norm and obviously you had um oh my god I've forgotten his name oh how I've forgotten his name the guy at Newcastle who got banned for for uh for betting as soon as he arrived last season from Milan. Um, oh, you're going to have to remind me in the comments because I can't remember his name. Somehow it's completely gone out of my head. So there are, you know, a few Italians have made the moon recently. Matt FT has got, with the exception of Zola and maybe Ravinelli in the 90s, how many big Italian players have made it in the Premier League? And also why this talk of shipping out Gabriel when Man City have five top centre-backs, Arsenal only have two, maybe three with White. Well, of course, you're missing one player there who has been a big success in the Premier League Italian player and he plays for Arsenal right now. And that's Jorginho, of course. Uh, he's had a very good time of things at Chelsea and, and Arsenal after making that move. Trying to think of other Italians who have, who have made it. Obviously, Doggy had a very good start. Um, going back to the era of Zola and Ravinelli, you had Di Matteo, obviously, at Chelsea. So there have, been, there have been some examples, but it is definitely a route that doesn't often come with loads of success when you move from Italy to England, for whatever reason. It's a strange one. But as I said, with Doggy Vicario, there have been some um, some recent examples of it, of it working and working pretty well. So hopefully if Calafuri does get done, then we can add, add his name to a list of um, successful Italians playing over in the Premier League. And um, LTMAFC says, could you see Tommy leaving if we do manage to sign Calafuri? No, I can't. I, I see someone leaving, as I said, but I certainly think it'll be, um, you know, Kivior. Or potentially Zinchenko, but I think Kivior is probably the most likely option, given Calafuri is basically the same sort of player, as in can play left-sided centre-back, can play left-back, and um, would just completely fill his space in squad, I would say. And there is interest in Kivior. We know that Italian club's very, very keen on Kivior. So I think should he should Calafuri get done, I would expect Kivior will probably move on. I have to say, I can't see it being Tommy Asu who just signed a new contract, obviously. Plus, he just gives you so much versatility, cr- versatility across the back line. You know, you can play him left back, left side of centre back, right side of centre back, right back, something Kivior can't do. So, no, I don't think Tommy would be the, would be the player to leave should Calafuri come in. Elsewhere, a little bit of news doing the rounds from Fabrizio, saying that Arsenal have now improved their offer to Chido to try and keep him. We know that Bayern Munich obviously pushing very hard to sign Chido Obi Martin and uh, Borussia Dortmund as well. And, um, you know, Arsenal, as I've said, you know, want to keep Chido and have been trying to keep Chido, but they're, they're not going to absolutely go out and break the bank on trying to sign this kid. They're obviously absolutely desperate for him to stay. And as Fabrizio says, you know, they've raised their offer to try and give him a more tempting offer to stay and be able to sign that professional contract when he turns 17, which he can't do yet because he's only 16. But in Germany, of course, they can sign professional contracts at 16, which is why it's so tempting for him to go and make that move at the moment. But Arsenal do want him to stay and they're really trying to keep him to stay. Fabrizio here says Arteta is 
really pushing for it. He wants to keep him and it makes sense because why would you want to lose a talent like that? But, you know, it comes to a point that you can only go so high for a 16-year-old when you're, when you're putting money on the table to try and keep him. Arsenal are trying, but they're not going to go absolutely crazy and spend him. So if Bayern are offering him some sort of money that Arsenal just cannot match, then, you know, he might end up going. But hope, fingers crossed he will stay. That's what Arsenal want. That's what we all want. And hopefully it will happen. Andrew here has got in touch. He says, happy treason day from your American fans. He said, Fabrizio reporting that we've gone on, uh, gone in with an improved offer for Cheeto. Great news. I hope he stays. Is there any push from EPL clubs on getting those regula regulations changed in England? I assume we're talking English laws versus EU, but it's completely unfair that we may potentially lose him because one country's rules allow him to get paid while England doesn't. I'm actually a contracts lawyer in America, and here there are rules allowing minors to sign contracts with parental consent. Surely Man City and Chelsea could turn their solicitor armies towards fixing this. I have to say, Andrew, I'm not absolutely clued up on exactly what the uh, um, the sort of what the laws are behind it all, but obviously over in the EU at the moment, you can offer um, professional contracts at 16. It's just different over here. Um, whether clubs are trying to push it, I haven't heard that there's a massive push behind the scenes to get this loophole sort of changed and brought back into being consistent with the laws in the EU. Like you said, I think Manchester City and the Premier League lawyers at the moment are pretty wrapped up on the fair few things that are going on behind the scenes in England, maybe to sort of worry about that sort of stuff. But um, who knows? Maybe you could come over here and you could you could make your niche over here, Andrew, and you could drive drive that change through and help protect the Premier League clubs when it comes to losing their best young talents to the rest of the uh, the European continent. Uh, Sammy Lekonga. As I've reported in the last week or so, that is now getting very, very close with Sevilla. Still the final few details trying to be sort of touched up and confirmed of this deal. I still think the most likely option is going to be a loan deal. Arsenal are very keen on it being a permanent deal. Sevilla have been sort of not playing hardball, but have been very keen for it to be a loan deal with some sort of obligation. I think at the moment, the main sort of focus of the negotiations at this stage are exactly how that clause is going to be written into the contract whether it's going to be a permanent deal with an obligation or it's just going to be a permanent deal you know at Sevilla's choosing of making it permanent at the end of the loan obviously Arsenal's preference would be an obligation because you know that there is money that is going to come in and you don't really want to get to the end of next season again and be in the exact same situation when it comes to Sambi I do think this is one that is going to get done everything that I've heard is that it is one that Arsenal are confident of getting done, but like Califuri, it's not done yet. And the talks are ongoing to try and come to a satisfactory conclusion with everyone. I think it'd be a good move for Sambi, I have to say. I think heading over to Liga, that sort of style of play, the pace of the game over there, slightly less frenetic than it is in the Premier League. And for a player who's, you know, technically very good, I think he could really do well over in Spain. And um, and it just feels like a decent enough move for him and going to a very good club as well, of course. So fingers crossed that one can get done and uh, and Arsenal do get some sort of obligation clause included in the contract. Elsewhere, Paulinha is heading to Bayern Munich. Now, what is this to do with Arsenal, you may say? Well, we know that Fulham are very, very keen on signing at least one Arsenal player this summer, potentially two. And they're getting really good money for Paulinho, especially when you consider he's 49, uh, 49, <laughs> 29. But they're getting around sort of 47 million, I think, for Paulinho. So they're going to have some money burning a hole in their pocket. I can't wait for them to come in with a 5 million bid for Emil Smith Rowe on the back of that um, after selling a 29 year old for 47 million. And then uh, probably bidding, you know, a quarter of that for a 23 year old England international. But hopefully, you know, look, I don't want anyone to be afraid to go. You know that. I'm a big, big fan. I want him to stay at Arsenal. I want him to be given a chance. I don't think he's going to get that chance. So he may as well go as much as it pains me to say that. And who knows, this big sort of money windfall that Fulham are getting, it's a club record deal for them. They could well put that money into trying to get a decent deal done for Emil or maybe Eddie and Ketia as well. So we wait to see how that plan pans out now. Um, I think Fulham's transfer dealing is certainly going to kick into gear a little bit once this deal with Paulinho has finally gone through for Bayern Munich. Nostradamus86 has got in touch here and says, hi Charles, with all the transfer talk, etc., who would your three ideal signings be to bring in that you can see potential moves taking place? Um, who would they be? I was thinking about this earlier and I think, you know, I have, I've 
firmly jumped on board the Eze train. I know he's not been great at the Euros, but I really like the idea of Eze at Arsenal. Um, I think it'd be a really exciting sign-in. I think he's got huge amounts of potential to get even better. I think he could add real creativity and flair to the central areas of Arsenal. I know a lot of people say he's a winger. I don't see him as a winger. I think he's more of a central player. Um, and I think with the coaching qualities that Arteta and his coaching team have, I think they could really mould him into a good player that fits the Arsenal system, whether that be at left eight or wherever, we'll have to wait and see. But I do like the idea of it as they, I think it'd be really, really exciting. I look, I don't know much about Califuri, but you know, this one seems like it's happening and, um, or seems like it's probably going to happen. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself there. And so I'll go with him as well, just because if Arsenal believe he is the guy, then I have full trust in Arsenal's recruitment of late that I think that he will be the guy and he'll do very, very well. So I'll go with him. Um, and then I'm going to go with a winger, either Neto or Williams. You know, I, I do worry about Neto's injury record. I've spoken about that before, but I think he's a fantastic player. And I think, he, I just think he's perfect for Arsenal. If it wasn't for the injuries I'd, like that, he would be the player I'd sign. Um, but also, you know, it's been impossible to watch Nico Williams at the Euros and not just think, my God, I would love to see him at Arsenal. So I would say those, I would say that I'd have Eze, Calafuri, and then either one of Neto or Williams. Uh, Paul here says, hey, Charles, what's your opinion on Patino as the third option for the deep line midfielder position? No, I just I just think that Patino is going to go. I think he'll, he'll be off this summer. That was the last I heard that that was going to be the plan. He was going to go on a permanent basis. He's only got a year left in his contract. He's not going to, I can't see him signing a new contract unless something has changed massively that I haven't heard about. So I just think Patino is going to go at some point during the summer. Um, so no. And I, when I look at that, third position of a deep line midfielder role. You know, you've got Party already, you've got Jorginho there and you've got Rice. So you've already got three. Patino's just not going to play it if he sticks around. So it just doesn't make any sense. It just makes a lot more sense now for a, a career that has just stagnated a bit over the last couple of years, despite a couple of decent promising loan spells. I think it's, uh, I think the likely option is he, he will go. That's certainly what my understanding of the situation is as it stands. And Sue My Chin and others got in touch. This is in reaction to what we were talking about with Saliba yesterday. And a lot of people getting in touch saying that they felt that Saliba was, it was inevitable that he was going to go fairly soon and that we should enjoy him for like a season more because Morao were going to come in for him. And uh, I was saying that like, I, I, I kind of agree what they're saying, but, you know, hopefully Arsenal can show that they he doesn't need to go anywhere to match his ambition in terms of what he wants to win over the course of his career. And Sue My Chin has got in touch. Many of others of you did as well. He says, Van Dyke has been the best centre-back in the world for the past five years, and he stayed at Liverpool. Real and PSG didn't even bother. If Arsenal can stay at this level and win some silverware, we don't need to worry about Saliba leaving. And I think that's the key thing, is that you do have to, and I said it yesterday, only sort of loyalty and love for a club and love for a group of players can only go so far. You can only maintain that for a limited amount of time. At some point, you have to start winning stuff to show these players that they can match their ambitions. They can achieve their dreams of what they want to win at this club. And that's the key thing. With Liverpool, Van Dijk knew and was shown that he could win things there. He won the Premier League. He won the Champions League. He got his hands on silverware and was always competing for the Premier League title as well. And that's what Arsenal need to do now. Yes, they've shown they can compete for the Premier League title, but I think to keep this core squad of the group together and to stop the likes of Madrid coming in and at least trying to cherry pick them and unsettle things over the next few years, especially someone like Saliba, they've got to show that they can get their hands on silver at Arsenal. And as I said yesterday, I'm convinced that will happen because I just, I can't see this team with this coaching staff not, getting over the line, even even when you're going up against Manchester City, I think Arsenal are going to still going to be able to do it and get themselves over the line. And hopefully that will be enough to keep Saliba and everyone else at the club for many years yet. And that's it for me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your time as always. I should have flagged this at the start of the show and I totally forgot, which is really, really annoying. But any of you who are still watching, I'm sitting down with James Benj for Inside Extra Time a little bit later on today, about 2 p.m. UK time. So if you want us to discuss anything in that show, then you know what to do. Get down into the comments below, start it with Extra Time, give us your opinion, your question, your comment, and we will pull some of them together and get them included in today's show. Until then, everyone, have a fantastic day. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.